versus He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Hey everybody, I am Vince of Geekvolution and welcome to Vince versus Vince versus what? Today, Vince is versus Masters of the Universe. In general, all of them, I will be versus everyone. No. That's right, universe over there in sector number 847654Z. I'm coming for you. Anyway, so let's get to what we're actually going to review today. And uh, I gotta say, I really enjoyed both things that I was that I that I'm reviewing for today. I really enjoyed them. I couldn't believe it. Uh, mainly because I've never been a huge fan of Masters of the Universe. Anyway, we have DC Masters of the Universe or He-Man in the Masters of the Universe issue one, and then we also have. Uh, Shadowland Magazine issue 4, where the featured article is about Masters of the Universe. In fact, the featured articles are about Masters of the Universe. So if you're a big uh, He-Man fan, this is for you. Alright, I'm going to save this for last, because I really enjoyed this, and I think you guys got to hang around and hear about it. Uh, He-Man Masters of the Universe, this was surprisingly decent. I, uh, By the way, this was sent to us from one of our awesome viewers. Uh, I believe his name is pronounced Hakelus. So thank you, Hakelus. And uh, Hakelus Magic the Gathering of You is coming. That's right. So anyway, I will come back and revisit this at some point in a later date and uh, review the whole series overall. Uh, now, to keep this in mind. I've never been a huge fan of the Masters of the Universe, and it just happened to be coincidence that uh, two of our viewers sent us things that are related to Masters of the Universe. Uh, Comic Vault will contain comics. That's where generally I will review those. But, uh, right now we are going to do this one in this because it relates to Shadowland Issue 4. Anyway, on to this. Uh, DC Entertainment. Uh, not that you can really tell from the logo anymore, but it, it is by DC. And uh, He-Man Masters of the Universe starts off, first of all, this is not a huge, big, uh, explosive, let's have everybody fight, let's get on everybody on the same page, uh, or I suppose, everybody on one page, rather. Uh, not everybody being on the same page. But, they do that, and they, they give you a nice little two-page spread, just to whet your appetite, but then it gets right into the point of the story. So, you see... Uh, essentially, they treat these things as fevered dreams. I dreamt last night that I was someone else. He's dreaming that he's He-Man, uh, this guy named Adam. And, uh, of course, Adam, He-Man, and in the cartoon show, that's something I never understood. I always thought that was so bizarre. Why is this guy with the strange voice, who looks surprisingly like He-Man, uh, not He-Man? How, how do we not know that he's... He-Man. That makes no sense to me. But uh, in the comic book, they're doing something kind of fun, and they're turning it on their ear. Of course, I'm not sure where they're going with it. I'm not sure if he actually is Prince Adam. I'm not sure if He-Man is Prince Adam, or if Prince Adam can turn into He-Man. So I'm not sure where they're going with this. But uh, right now, there is one thing that we do know. The entire issue is really about this guy who's dreaming that he's He-Man, and there are certain things within this this reality that he sees that uh, are true in He-Man's world. So, it's a little difficult for, for us to say that, or at this stage of reading issue one, as to what he's going to be, as to, uh, as, anyway, that's what I just said. So moving on, uh, what I think is really clever about this, I think that uh, the point is that somebody is controlling his mind and implanted false memories. That's what I think is what's going on with this. And uh, if that's the case, then what's really interesting is that uh, instead of just taking away his memories and making him like a little girl or something, they're trying to give him uh, little bits of the life of a person who is a warrior. So he's a woodsman. He's not just like a, a shoemaker or something. He's a woodsman. <laughs> and uh, what's interesting about that is you know, he, he swings an axe all day. That's what he does. He chops down trees. Uh, maybe he enjoys it. I don't know. Uh, it looks like he really doesn't enjoy it. He's kind of dissatisfied with his life. He, there's something about it that seems off to him. And he's slightly... He's hes a good guy. He continues to try to do the things that a good guy would do. He takes care of his sick father. But uh, he seems largely dissatisfied. So the fact that he swings a weapon, provided he has an alter ego, or the potential of becoming a warrior, another person, him using an axe 
would give him a reason. Like, for example, you put an axe in his hand, and suddenly he doesn't think that he's a warrior. He thinks that he's going to work. So it's, it's kind of clever. His father's delusional of being a king, and uh, so therefore his name's Adam, and therefore he is Prince Adam. So it's kind of fun. They turn it on their ear a little bit. We're going to see what they do with it when, it, when uh, I eventually get to read the second issue and when uh, uh, the other ones in the series come out. And uh, so there is something, there, there are some things that uh, intrude upon Mr. Adam's life here that uh, would really only be true of He-Man's life. And it's fun to see, like, for example, there's a fight. I'm not going to tell you who he fights or what he fights, but uh, there is a fight in here where Adam is starting to use muscle memory and thinking to himself, how did I know how to do that? Why, why would I do this? Like, he's, it's very, and I don't, I, this has almost become a naughty word to say in the comic community, but it's very comic book. Uh, the last page is a huge reveal. Uh, the, the progression of the comic book has big page, like big two-page spreads of certain things. Um, it's very pretty. It's very uh, Grecian god. Uh, in stature for a lot of characters, but it's all brought down to a, a minor or a, sort of a minute level there You could make parallels between uh, the way Adam is living his life and the way Luke Skywalker is living his life not to say that they're the same thing But to say that there are some parallels uh, It's I think it's totally worth checking out the, the thing about it is is that I really don't have a lot that I can say about this issue because it's only one issue but I will say that it enticed me enough that I wanted to see what else was coming out so therefore DC you're getting some of my money again because I have officially added issues to through end on my poll so I will be getting these until if I lose interest I'll stop <laughs> of course I will but uh, provided I go through all the oh wait no I said I'd review them yeah no I'll keep on yeah I'll keep on yeah I'll keep reading these guys, and I'll give you a review at the end of it. All six issues, or I think it's six issues. Anyway, I think uh, issue one's worth picking up. We'll see what happens with issue two. I'm kind of excited about it, though, because uh, I've never been interested in He-Man until, well, when I was a kid, I was interested in He-Man, but that was really about it. I tried watching some of the cartoon more recently and didn't care for it. But uh, this has my interest, and I will keep reading. So, thank you, Hegelus. And now, on to uh, the big thing. This thing's really quite a large magazine. It's printed on very sturdy paper, and it's a very nice magazine. Uh, this was sent to us by the editor of Shadowland Magazine and said, uh, uh, I was hoping you guys could check this thing out. Maybe say if you like it. So, uh, thank you for sending this to us. Now, I really enjoyed this issue. I read it from front to back. I thought it was super fascinating. Now, a lot of magazines, I feel, are written by... Uh, uh, essentially, a lot of the content of magazines are determined by the industry. Now, uh, some of you might be sitting out there and saying, Duh. It's, it's about the industry. Of course it's determined by the industry. Well, you know, that's the thing. Is I think a magazine, a good magazine, should be determined by the people who are creating it. The, the, the editors, the writers, those people should really define what goes into a magazine. And uh, a lot of the time, like, I feel like Wizard, one of the problems with Wizard was that uh, so much of it was defined by just trying to kiss up to the comics industry. And... Uh, I liked Wizard. I thought they had some good articles in there, but I wouldn't read an issue front to back because I'd say, oh, there's another one that's really about the giant crossover that I read that's not very good. And uh, I don't care about some of that stuff because it, it feels like it's defined by the industry. What would those people like to hear me say about that? This feels like people who are either... Uh, either have something to say or they have a lot of love for the thing that they're writing about and uh, it's so it just it's enticing it's that's something that I think is kind of unique in uh, a lot of uh, a lot of publications is the ability to make you come make you want to come with them and experience the thing that they're experiencing now uh, there are, are a couple issues in here that were a couple issues, a couple articles in here that really struck my fancy. Uh, and those two articles are all about merchandise. And that's what's so interesting. They have an entire article in here about, uh, first of all, they have, of course, the Frank Langella Skeletor on here. And yes, they have a giant article 
on uh, on the movie. But they also have, what I think is even more interesting, an article on the merchandise. How did He-Man start? Well, it started as a toy land. Or toy, toy line. A <laughs> toy land. Shadowland. A, uh, it started as a toy line. And... You know, they uh, they tell you what figures come out, when they came out, what the purpose of them were. Uh, then they tell you about the mini comic. Then they tell you about the cartoon series. They give you an extremely comprehensive uh, uh, article on the inception through the most recent He-Man things to come out. It's really interesting, and I am super jazzed about all of the uh, about all of this. These toys and the toy it made me want to buy the toys, although that's a heck of a lot of money to just drop on figures. That's quite a lot of money. But, uh, oh man. And then the other article that I was really jazzed about was they have an article in here about the resurgence of, of merchandising for Universal Monsters that happened in the 90s. And uh, I remember being a kid, looking around at all this, this, these monster things coming out, and suddenly I got interested. And uh, some of it's really held with me today. I have a small werewolf collection that's uh, quickly growing, because every so often I find werewolf figures or things that are fun. And anyway, uh, so it was really fun to see this. And it's not just an article. They have a lot of stuff. They have a lot of, they have a lot of pictures. They have a lot of examples. They, they have a lot of... Uh, uh, of course, you know, it's it's not enough to just describe a figure. You have to show the figure. And it's not just the 90s. The reason that they, they call it the 90s, they say that there was a resurgence in the 90s, which of course there was, but uh, there is a lot of stuff in here. Things that came out in the 60s, things that came out in the 80s, things that came out in the uh, the 90s. So, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of interesting stuff in here. And it's not just... It's not just the sideshow things that were super cool that people really enjoyed. Uh, it's also weird things and, and off the beaten path things. And uh, so it's it's like, for example, a, like a werewolf button, or wolfman button rather, or a uh, or what I'm looking at right here, a party pack of, of Dracula and uh, Universal Monster themed things. So they'll have plates and napkins and cups and they, they show you a lot of really interesting, bizarre stuff. So that's what's so interesting about the merchandising, is it's not just the commonplace things that you would expect to see. It's also, these guys really got out there and found some fun stuff and put them in the magazine. And I was really just pleased to see that. It just made me excited. Because so much of the time, magazines are, are just about what's happening in the industry today. And uh, people forget that there's interesting things that uh, you can create. Uh, you can compile information, do a little research, and suddenly, or do a lot of research in, in the case of well, some of these guys, uh, and you make, you make it interesting. You can have stuff about merchandising. Now, there's lots of reviews in here. There's uh, a video game review. There's, there's video games. There's movies. There's books. There's uh, retrospectives on certain things, so I wouldn't call their article on Necroscope really a review. I would say it's more of a, a retrospective saying, look, these things came out, I think this is why they're interesting, and this is why it was significant to me. I think that's an interesting touch. I think it's kind of fun for, a, for the writer of an article to tell you why it touched them. What was it? Like, for example, he's going through, uh, what do you call that? A used bookstore and he finds a line of necroscope and he literally buys it because the cover looks fun and uh, he gets about halfway through the book before he realizes it's a vampire book he's oh these are vampires <laughs> it's it's what's so interesting to me that this guy took us on a little journey to understand what it was about necroscope that was touching to him to his life rather not necessarily that's touching within the story itself but oh my goodness I am getting a phone call, and it can wait. I broke my phone. Oh, they have an event in here that's really fun. An event, a group. It's called uh, Frighten Brighton, which is really interesting. Which, of course, uh, uh, for those of us who are in the States, we can't go to that because it's in England. <laughs> but uh, I suppose we could. But they, they try to have regular showings. They try to have events. Uh, it's really interesting to me that uh, they're trying to keep the old horror movie alive. They're trying to get people to come and watch this stuff and have a good time and experience these things for the millionth time or the first time. It's, I think it's such a worthwhile thing to, ah, 
<laughs> to look at old movies and say, remember this? This was worthwhile. So Fright and Brighton completely has my interest. I, I wish I could go to that, but uh, alas, I'm, I'm not in England. Uh, this thing's only ten bucks. It's really, for such a, a thick, well-produced magazine, it's only ten bucks. It's pretty good. And uh, I'll say this, that you might even cover that ten dollar cost if you were planning on, if you want to buy some maybe fantasy or horror themed art, things like that. Uh, there is a code in here, which I'm not going to give you the code because that would defeat the point of you buying the magazine. But uh, it says that there is a graphic artist, his name is Matt Pepler, and uh, he has applied his creative talents to ensuring that you know the rules to survive the zombie apocalypse. You can find his zombie rules typography prints at etsy.com slash shop slash Matt Pepler art. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Pepler. Matt spelled with two T's. Pepler spelled with two P's in the middle. P-E-P-P-L-E-R. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so you can get 10% off by having... Yeah, through January. So, yay! Uh, that might be worth it if you want to buy this and some get 10% off on some else. That's a great idea. Anyway, I, I think it's such a cool thing that they would put a, a code in here to get you... A little coupon. It's fun. You don't have to cut it out of the magazine either. It gives you a code. So, I like the reviews. I think that the reviews are coming from, as I said earlier, people who have something to say, people who have a, a little bit of critical ability who want to talk about something, or people who are uh, have a lot of reverence for the thing that they're talking about. Maybe it's a piece of their childhood and they just want to tell you what... Like, for example, uh, Masters of the Universe, the movie, is not necessarily a widely well-received movie, and the writer of that is aware of it. He's just telling you why he finds it significant. And, uh, and it's not even about why it's a good movie. It's about why he finds it to be a good movie, and he's very aware of that. And I find that to be uh, uh, something that can be defended, you know. A movie can be something... You don't have to like only good movies. And not only good movies can be liked. Uh, some things make it into film canon for a reason, and some things do not. But that's okay. It doesn't have to be a sophisticated feature in order for you to enjoy it. So, uh, there, there are a couple of uh, complaints I do have for, for you guys. Or not necessarily complaints, but maybe... Uh, uh, you know, I'm trying to maintain objectivity here. It wouldn't be a review if I only talked about how cool it was. It'd be a recommend. But, uh, so, there, there are a couple of issues that, uh, that I can talk about here. When a person reviews something, and, and a, more than one writer is, uh, has fallen into this pitfall, and I believe when I first started reviewing, I had this issue too. Summary is... N they give a lot of summary during their reviews, which is okay to a certain extent. If it's a movie that's extremely hard to find, if the chances of me watching this movie or having seen this movie are extremely slim, if the chances of me not having seen it are extremely uh, <laughs> uh, prevalent, we'll call that, then I understand why you would put uh, a lot of summary in a particular article or about that, about that particular piece. But uh, for things that are extremely popular, or for things that are uh, easy to get a hold of, or for things that, uh, well, I'll say it this way. If you are writing a review, you're writing it for one of two people. You're either writing it for somebody who's seen the movie and you want to break it apart and really get to the guts of it, or you're writing it for somebody who has not seen the movie and you want to give them something that might entice them to see the movie, or you, you're wanting to break it apart and you want to give them evidence as a you know, as you go along. But when you put an entire summary from beginning to end, a plot summary, uh, you're taking away a lot of what's fun about the movie itself. Uh, so for some of these things, of course, the things that I couldn't get a hold of, I did appreciate when they would tell us what happened in the movie. Fair enough. But uh, I found it grating when I would read an entire summary and then I would go into their actual review and then uh, about midway into what their point is, they give you uh, a recap of what happened that took place in the summary. Uh, you don't need to do that. Or you don't need a summary if you're going to do that. And I think that uh, it's good to reference things. It's good to uh, pull from the movie. It's good to pull examples from the movie. Uh, because it's necessary. Otherwise, you're just making unsupported claims. You do want to support your claims. But 
a summary is inessential. What is essential is providing evidence. So when you make a claim, go ahead and pull something from a movie. But uh, uh, And this might just be a taste difference. But I feel like it's necessary to do it that way. Because having a big summary is time-consuming, and it gives you extra pages that you don't necessarily need to print, and you guys could save some money by not doing that. But anyway, uh, other than that, I will say that the, the articles, I did enjoy the articles, so I'm not criticizing the level of writing, I'm criticizing the, uh, the impulse that a lot of critics have to summarize things. And it's, lots of people have that impulse. I just don't think it's necessary. So... See here. Also, every so often things are in all caps, which I find to be strange because what that means is that the person who's writing it is yelling at me. If something is in all caps, it means that they're yelling at the person that they're talking to. And uh, I understand it's trying to add some emphasis to what's being said. And to some extent, maybe that's why this book, as I said earlier, and maybe approachable is not the right word, but I'll say it again. Maybe that's why this uh, this issue is so approachable is because it's written by people who are trying to be fairly... I'm not sure what I'm trying to do. It's like they're writing dialogue instead of writing an article. And uh, that's working for you guys in a certain way. But uh, to some extent, when you have things like all caps, it's working against you because it's... It depends on how the reader's going to take that. Somebody jumping up and down and yelling, or, or somebody's like, listen up, this is what I want you to understand. So... I feel that it comes off kind of strange. This thing enticed me to keep reading. I found myself caring about things that I didn't previously care about. Uh, they have an article in here about Dark Shadows, well actually more about uh, the vampire in Dark Shadows, whose name I currently forget. But uh, the Jonathan Frid was the name of the actor, so he passed away this year. And uh, I think it's Barnabas Collins Collins, Barnabas, I can think of Barnabas, I couldn't think of Collins. I'd never watched Dark Shadows before, and it wasn't something that I really cared to look into. And then after Johnny Depp came out with his movie, I had even less interest in seeing Dark Shadows, because if it was anything like uh, these weird little revamped comedies that come out, I didn't care. Now, now that I know what it's like, I'm kind of interested to see some of this stuff. I want to see where it's going. I want to see what Dark Shadows was. Uh, but, uh, this thing entices me to be interested in things that uh, it, just, it just brings me in. It sucks me in. And I did read all of it. So <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, guys at Shadowland Magazine, for sending this to me. And uh, you can get this at ShadowlandMagazine.com. That is www.ShadowlandMagazine.com. And they have another issue coming out. This is published quarterly, so four issues a year. And uh, for 10 bucks an issue, that's really not too bad, guys. Uh, I think this is totally worth getting. So, thanks for watching, and uh, as I said, this is worth getting, but this is really worth getting. So, thank you guys at Shadowland Magazine, and thank you, Hakelis, for sending uh, stuff about He-Man, for sending us these issues. So, thank you very much. I am Vince of Geekvolution. We'll catch you next time.